So let's talk about a, a typical data science project. Um, so, uh, so, so, I mean, you, you used readmissions. I don't know if you want to use another one, but. No. Yeah, I'll use, I'll use another one that's, um, uh, that I think is, you know, is an important one. Uh, let's look at, um, we'll use two of them. We can talk about two because some of the elements are, are pretty similar. Let's look at, um, let's look at it in a, in a couple of levels. So let's say, let's say somebody came to me and said, hey, hey, Charles, um, we'd like you to develop a, a predictive model for predicting patients that are likely to become hypertensive or let's say likely to become type two diabetics. That's, you know, that's, that's reasonable. Um, but I would push back and say, hey, let's do that, but let's start here first. Let's find those patients within our population that are undiagnosed diabetics or undiagnosed hypertensive patients. We all have them. So that would be step one for me. Step two would be the, be the predictive model because, you know, I, as a clinician, I want to help as many people as I can, you know, uh, quicker. And that's one of the benefits of having a clinician data scientist because they got the domain. They totally understand the domain and they would come to, you know, something, you know, similar to that. So, um, so, so what do we do? What does that look like? Um, you know, really first step is what I call, you know, business understanding, if you will, really, what are the, um, uh, defined objectives? Uh, what are the data sources that we need? And let's do some research. Uh, I'm not going to be the first one to build a model for, for those two, the, those two items. I'm sure a lot of work has been done prior to me. So let's find out the work that's been done. Um, let's, um, do the research and then let's start, um, you know, bringing in the, the data that's required for that. Um, so let's bring in the data, explore the data, get the data quality, um, you know, work all the, the kinks out there. And then, um, at that point, We've got what we want to do. We've got the data that we need to do it in. And now we do what's called uh, uh, feature selection. All right. So in the business understanding, so you have, uh, you're going to define the objectives. You're going to, you're going to identify the data sources, and then you're going to do uh, some research. Where would you go for the research? I mean, uh, do you go to? Sure. This is PubMed for our purposes, being in healthcare. Yeah. Uh, this is peer reviewed, um, peer reviewed, um, you know, journals and, and so forth. Uh, it's, it, it's really important. Uh, you know, Google search in this case usually doesn't cut it, although you might, you know, you might find a few things that are, you know, valid. But again, you know, PubMed and, you know, some of the peer reviewed journals and whatnot, just to kind of get a flavor of what's gone on before you. And to be honest with you, it actually kickstarts um, and gets you thinking. Um, you know, a lot of data science is really about, you know, you know, having that, you know, self-talk or if you will, you know, that cognitive exercise of, you know, what we're really trying to do and whatnot. Um, and having, that's why a clinicians doing this uh, have the, the discipline and understanding of certain features that are likely, I'm going to put some likely uh, emphasize that, um, that'll be a benefit in a model like this. But there's also other data elements out there that we need to look at, um, you know, such as social determinants, um, exposome data, um, other, other data elements within the, you know, the, the healthcare data set, if you will, um, that, you know, play a role in that. So, um, we're now doing the modeling. We've, we've, we're doing feature selection and I may, I'm oversimplifying this bill because, you know, this yeah, is, this well, is, you, you almost have to, I mean, cause at, yeah. at this point you've, you've done your research, but then you have to get the data now in a, in a, in a mature organization, that data is going to be, you know, just available to you either in a, in an EDW or, uh, or accessible through a, a big data, uh, platform or set of APIs. Um, but generally there's an awful lot of work that goes on there of, of wrangling that data and, and, and cleaning it up, I would assume. Yes. So in, in that case, um, again, remember I told you, you don't want your data science, your data science guy to, um, or gal to be, um, you know, doing data wrangling. Um, so that's where, a, you know, a data engineer or a data wrangler would come into play. Um, data scientist says, hey, this is what I need. Data wrangler goes up and, you know, wrangles it up, if you will, um, and delivers it to the, the data scientist so that they, um, you know, have a, you know, have a data set that they can start working with. So they'll send a, spend a lot of time in business understanding, hopefully very little in the data uh, ingestion and acquisition. And then they spend, a, I, I assume the data scientist spends a fair amount of time in the modeling. Uh, yes. 
and, and that's, that's where they're earning their, their keep really, I would think. Yeah. That's their training. That's their, you know, that's their discipline. That's, that's, that's their gig. That's what they do. And do, they, do, they, do you start, I mean, this is one of the things that somebody had said to me is, do you start with the, the hypothesis or do you start with the data and the data sort of tells so, the story? I am the a priori approach, which is let the data speak for itself. Um, others have the other approach. Neither one is wrong, but one should consider, um, you know, the other. Uh, let's say a, di a diabetic model. I'd be foolish if I left out A1Cs, right? That would make absolutely zero sense to me. Um, or BMI, a BMI calculation. Um, um, so there are some features that we know that are going to play a, a, you know, a role. But let's look at the the rest of the data and see what comes up with it. And tools such as you know linear regression and, and so forth will um, you know help us understand that. The benefit that we have in healthcare is we have diabetic type two patients. We have um, type you know we have hypertensive patients. Um, and if we get into you know predictive models for patients that are likely to crash, we have all of that. So um, you know understanding those patients those data sets, those features and whatnot are of an absolute benefit um, for, the, for the design and then considering you know, features outside. Social determinants. Um, I get a big boost personally in, um, in accuracy by using certain social determinants of health within these predictive models, especially for um, you know, patients likely to become diabetic and hypertensive and so forth. So you gotta kind of take it from you know, all, all aspects. Um, and then you've got to have the discipline. Hey, if I come up with a, a model that's, you know, 0.5, well, that's a flip of a coin. That's really not going to, you know, do me any good. This is where data science in the training and the rigor around it really comes into play. You have to be disciplined to say, okay, this model isn't working. It doesn't have the accuracy that I'm looking for. I got to go on to something else, right? Um, and I'll experiment. I'll do what I need to do. I'll maybe do an ensemble model, but at the end of the day, if my accuracy is not such that um, it, it's going to work, then I've got to I've got to call it at that point. Um, I'm not going to go bend features and you know do manipulations and so forth so that I get an area under the curve that's you know in the high 90s. It is what it is. Um, maybe in some models, you know. 0.75 would, will, will be acceptable, and others maybe 0.88, uh, you know, 0.9 are, will be acceptable. You know, and that's where the communication comes in, Bill. Everybody that's involved in one of these projects um, has to be there for, for all of this. Um, this. None of this can be black boxed. They have to see the data sets. They have to see the feature selection. They have to see the math. They have to see the output and whatnot. That's the only way you're going to get buy-in as well.